They are two very, very good poker players away from the pool table. <laughs> in that interview, uh, I think you could see why. It's Declan Brennan who breaks off. It's Scotch doubles for the first frame, so the two Northern Irishmen will be playing alternate shots together. It's a race to four or zero on the match clock, which is ticking down from 20, as you can see on the back of the arena there. It's English eight ball, played to international rules. You pick your colour set, yellows or reds in this situation. <coughs> pot your balls, pot the eight ball, win the frame. Four of those will win you the match. Or we go to the match clock, whatever the scoreline is, at zero, which does bring in play the draw. Looks like a three ball plan to open things up on yellows for Ronan and Declan. And that could have landed a lot worse. The yellow that they are right behind would have been an enormous problem ball if they weren't sort of on it straight away here. I think Declan's going to have to take this or maybe figure another way around it. But a great, great opening match to, to kick off. It's a really, really good group here, so si. I mean, you've got probably on paper the four best players in the group in, in this first match, but as we know by now, Declan plays that off the eight ball. That's clever. As we know by now, the Paris Cup is absolutely not played on paper. Form book, to an extent, goes out the window in a tournament like this. I do think that the pairs here, they won't say it, they'll never admit it, because they probably know, you know Ronan and Declan are the favourites for this, quite rightly, and Dehan and Ryan are the second favourites. They'd probably rather not be meeting the first match. They'd probably rather play one of the other two pairs, and, you know, if they were to win, and that's a big, big if, because the other two pairs can really play as well they'd meet in match four rather than match one but whoever wins this match will be strengthened as favourite for the group yeah it's a massive first match for them both in all honesty which also means that the second match when the two father son duos come head to head is also a huge game win your first game tonight and you're really in business Ronan and Declan have gone about this finish really really well because it was tricky and a couple of the shots came out a little awkward but they've recovered really well to get to a situation where the three yellows remaining and the eight ball are all accessible you all have a pretty clear route out and i've loved the way they've gone about this a lot of confidence between the two players declan's having his best season ever four finals he had this year with ultimate ball he's only won one title which will be huge irritation to him but he knows that four titles in seven months is very very good and obviously Ronan winning the world title once again yeah an astonishing achievement in so many ways I think I'm more amazed with Ronan's second world title than the first just Agreed. because I think we all felt and he even indicated it that maybe his career was was on its way out and maybe he would be stepping away from the game but that world title and the way he won it he's still very much a force in the game and break wise you'd probably put Dan's above Ryan's not by a huge amount but probably would having said that though you're yeah, not complaining with that break are they you? must have a reason for that <coughs> obviously they the middle scotch frame they get the choice which one of their two players will have the break Really good chance for four straight here. Really good chat about this layout. Can talk all the way through, which is different to the World Championships where they made the final. Using it's Carl Sutton and Shane Thompson, but that's one way you have to keep quiet. Scotch all the way through. This one's very much different. This is very much the pairs and very much ultimate ball and you can do what you like out there. <coughs> Dayan just left that previous shot a touch short. Another an excellent shot. Yeah, 
Yeah, Rennie McCarthy and Declan Brennan were also in that World Championship doubles competition. They got an absolute stinker of a draw. They played uh, Team Blessed, Luke Gilbert and Dom Cooney first round. Lost a close one. First early exit for them, wasn't it? Two years prior to that, it was semi-final and final. They were the runners-up in Morocco two years ago. Or a year ago, a year and a bit ago, as it was. Work this well, just need to play one good positional shot just to make sure that you're going to get on the eight ball nicely. If they're playing for eight ball in the corner, which is what I expect, they want a good angle to make sure that they come across. If oh yeah, a bit of a furrowed brow from Declan Brennan, I'm, I'm wondering too. straight or if anything slightly off straight going low I think they're okay yeah. I think you can pick the pocket enough here that that's fine it's just you're sort of forcing one into the middle which never feels comfortable I always fear that as a pool player which may be why Declan raised his eyebrows but yeah, he was okay in the end yeah another pretty flawless visit to the table it's been a very very high standard so far yeah, 1 minute 40 and he's decided this is it and it's a lovely first shot actually enough time to just control yourself. Still can't afford to make a mistake here. With a minute left. Even 40 seconds left. Deck could have a good go at these yellows. So it's not quite an insurance visit this from Dan where he knows he's not going to leave Declan anything. He's got to keep going on this finish. Can't afford to fall too early. I think that ball going in means that he's probably the only one that can win this frame. And he should win this frame from here. Yeah, that's a lovely shot. Actually, at this stage, you probably want to run a little yeah. bit of clock. I Just a little bit. That. He's running a bit quick here. You've got to, he's not going to be able to do it here. You've got to get... You want to make this a buzzer beater. Don't want to give like, a, a ghost the only advantage is they do have the next break, so it takes away that golden break. Only a golden duck could hook. Oh, braver man than me. Well, the favourites are going to be losing the first match here. That yellow played big, Dan played it well, and now they lead with about 16 seconds remaining on the clock. I saw that, but. Really, 16 or 13 makes no odds. There's going to be time for a break, and that's it. And that's a legal break, and they are away. That's a legal break, and that is the victory. Big, big win for the Maltese in the first match of the night. Darren Grek and Ryan Pisani absolutely delighted with that, as you can tell. And again, a bit of prep from their mate Clayton Castaldi as well, who's in the house. Brilliant result for the Maltese. They're off to a flyer in the Pairs Cup. Oh, here is young Cohen Bradford taking the stage once again with Ultimate Pool. Very, very impressed with his performance at the weekend against Tom Cousins, despite it being in defeat. But if the Bradfords are going to get one over on the max tonight, to do with making a ball off the break and that one is dry from Cohen so it'll be Vic and Vivek to the table first and just that scoreboard is so nice isn't it Bradford Bradford Mac <laughs> Mac it just looks nice it's pretty cool it really is great experience for them we have seen a few Vivek and Vic sort of started the trend we saw the uh, we saw the Joneses last year Tom Jones junior and senior yeah We've so seen uh, uncle and nephew as well. We have. Seen brothers. Seen all sorts of sort of familial relations, but having a father and son duo play against each other really is something pretty special. And you can only really imagine what it must be like for for the Bradfords and, and the Max watching at home and, and seeing father and son on, on the TV. It must be a, an incredible experience. Yeah, and what, worth pointing out, they're not making up the numbers either. They're the Max have been through to a, a finals night. To not help, you know, the, these two pairs have got. They're, they're obviously outsiders for tonight, but they're also 
every chance to make it through. It's such a volatile format. It's such a brilliant format. Well, you saw in the first game, I mean, you'd probably say, I think for the, for the, for the bookies at least, it's a relatively easy group to, to do your odds for, because I think there's a pretty sort of clear and obvious one, two, three, four, really, in Agreed, terms of experience yeah. and level. And, but two just beat one because it was it was a coin flip game because they both played well and, and that can happen in a short race. I think if you extrapolated the race over, say, a master's length and it's best of 25, you'd really give Deck and Ronan a probably quite a big advantage. But in a race to four, it's such a short burst, anything can happen. We hear it from our players all the time. That was a, a poor shot, a poor combination of shots playing for straight in, not getting it, causes all sorts of issues. That It's never comfortable playing for straight in when there's no margin either either side of straight in, which is what they had there. Definitely make the case they should have worked it to be playing that ball that's just gone in right centre into bottom left-hand corner. Now Vic has a, a big task to make this one. Yeah, that was missable. That was a really tough shot. Vivek actually did a pretty good job of getting him on that, to be honest, with any shot. steady here for the counter it's not an absolute certainty but it's a frame they should win and if they don't feel they're where they want to be they've got control at some point they have to deal with the the one on the cushion ideal world you get rid of it next Go left center then play the one on the cushion and get back out I don't think there's any question mark about the eight ball. He comfortably goes top right. So we're just a case of working yourself through this one. Oh, that's no good though. Okay, they can survive and, and recover. But what happens here is he can dink this in and he's going to be on the right hand one of the two yellows. And then you play on the left hand one and then you get the take. So it, that shot there causes issues. Yeah, tough shot here. They can't even dink it in, so they're going to swing it round. Yeah, that a pretty good go. There is a safety shot here, though, and you know we saw in the first game two elite level pairs, and I just wonder if now's the time to sort of pick your battles a bit, really, for the Bradfords and just draw back. Yeah, the problem with the safety here is they've got to play it. There's no choice. But the problem is, you're going to leave a pretty easy one cushion that has every chance to allow Vivek here to make the red and be on the other red to left centre. So he's obviously one cushion, possibly even two cushions. If you just catch a cushion first, there's a big margin of error on that shot. And the other thing that was the problem with the safety, you couldn't pop the yellow into play at the same time, which you'd love to have been able to put that one over the right cent uh, sorry, the left centre pocket and get the snooker at the same time. Just wonder if there's a slightly different way to play that snooker as well. Maybe going off the left yellow and off oh, that close here. Yeah. What a shot that is! Just a touch short of pace. That's all. That was an excellent shot. I fully expected him to make that. Take nothing away. It was a brilliant shot, but it's one of those you sort of expect the player to get close. The kick shot wasn't there for Vic. On the other side of it, so they get away with it. And they've left a pretty presentable angle here of the Max to allow the Bradfords to track down the table. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect, just drop in top left and come on down, get on the one on the cushion. Also, really nice that the red's gone to the middle of the cushion. Just a touch of freedom in this, in this chance here. Touch straight on this one. Ideal world, you'd rather have angle so you could pop it out, take both in the same pocket. Paul's done well to drop it in and 
make it nice and easy for Cohen here. Goes the eight ball. Obviously got a real knack for the game. Great break from Vic. Oh, that's cruel. That's that really is. cruel. Really, really cruel. Hit that. It was good. We won't see a better strike on the break all night long. Yeah, look at that. That cue ball is perfect. Really is. Oh, that's a bruise. <laughs> you can see Vivek's reaction in the corner. That's a pretty brutal kicking off. It really, really is tough, that. Extension call. So cue ball in hand behind the line for Cohen Bradford. And <coughs> nice just to have a, an angel on the shoulder, so to speak, with, with his dad in his corner. He didn't have this, of course, when he played in the Masters on Friday. And it'll probably help him just stay settled that little bit more because he spoke in his interview, I thought, really eloquently. He speaks really well about you know what the experience was like and he was very very nervous before playing that first game and he, he thought he'd, he'd be a little bit less nervous tonight because of that but also just having your old man next to you just automatically must be a bit of a nerve settler yeah you've got somebody with you in the arena it's it definitely helps his first shot went wrong and his second shot's gone wrong as well yeah that red on the break line is the big issue for him I'm a huge fan of, of attacking your bad ball early, so I'm, I can't be critical of him trying to attack his bad ball there on the first shot. Disappointing that he didn't get the cannon, but he could have if he wanted to. Played the first shot to get the good angle on the one to left centre to then play the breakout, which might have made it a touch easier for him, but I'll never criticise someone for going straight after it. And he gets the angle this time. It's a lovely shot. Played that really well. The problem he has is if he gets the breakout here, well he's not, he's looking at the gap. I was going to about to make the point that if he makes the, goes for the breakout here, he could land really awkward. Well, if he's playing the gap, this is a lovely bit of vision. That will do. I love that. Well, what's better than going after your work early and cannoning balls and not having to play a cannon yeah. and just playing on it? Yeah, now I'm going to just accept what he's got. Anywhere near straight in on the red to bottom right. Cue that in and the frame is one. Yeah, that's lovely. <coughs> See a lot of young players coming through. A lot of them, I tried to touch on this at the start and we were out in the arena, a lot of them become shot makers and they've got great ability to pop balls and spin the ball around and do all sorts of things. And the thing that impressed me when I first saw Cohen play is that he tries to work the puzzle out. And that's what he's done here. He tried to work it out, didn't work out. First shot, reworks it out and gets the job done. Beautiful finish. Firm enough. I love the idea. And now you've got a big, big problem. It's difficult to land on it as a double. I'm flying into it here. Yeah, he was. It was a bit of a wild one from Vivek. He didn't really have much of a choice. And he had to play it delicately as well. There were people saying, why didn't he just hit it harder? But if he hits that firmer to, to get the it Vic to. Vic shot, you mean? Vic shot, sorry, yeah. It, it would. Um, it would throw wider and, and wouldn't go in as nicely. So he had to kind of find that real delicate balance of playing it firm enough to move the ball, but not too firm to throw it offline. And yeah, it was a, the shot was definitely on. It just wasn't as easy as it it could be. Yeah, the margins are small. Yeah. Right? And now it's clock management here. I can imagine it would be Paul Bradford's first taste of 15 seconds a shot. Might be Cohen's as well. I'm not sure if he. I was going to say, did he get to 15 at the no, on Friday? Very, to be fair, very, very few matches did. It was, it was nice to see Ultimate Paul open it up a little bit and, and give one for the players to have a little bit more breathing room. We still had the match clocks, but 
there was oh, 50 minutes, two <coughs> sessions of 50 minutes for 25 frames, which for top professionals was a, a long time. We had one six red shootout. In fact, it was Ryan Pisani that won that six red shootout. Well, there's hope here. There's a lot of hope. 45 seconds. Oh and you fancied Vivek for that. Yeah. He's fuming. He's missed it. Yeah, he should have made that one. I know it was on the cushion. I know it was awkward, but he should oh, have made it. Seems to be a pause out there. Yeah, I think it's a foul. It might be loss of frame here. They played out of turn. They've played out of turn, I think. Because remember that Vivek had that wild swipe to try and break out the ball. Vic played the, the ball off a ball and didn't yeah. open it up. And then Vivek's come out. Yeah, I think that's um I think it's loss of frame for that, isn't it? Yeah. Actually I'm being told it's standard foul in my ear. So it, but it's definitely a standard foul. They've definitely played out a turn. So it's a standard foul, cue ball in hand. That will ice this match, you feel. Yeah, Vivek playing two shots in a row. And that will be enough to give cue ball in hands on a Scotch frame. You have to say, job done there by Scott Price as well. Doesn't miss a trick out there, does he? No. And Paul's just going to take his time with this one. It's a tough pot, but it, he'll be waiting to see 3-2-1 on that clock before he plays it because of that reason. Doesn't need to worry, really, though. And job done then for Paul and Cohen Bradford, who win the father-son duel against Vic and Vivek Mack. What a moment for those two to secure their first ever Ultimate Pool win and a huge, huge celebration. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup and it is crunch time for Declan Brennan and Rona McCarthy. And the Max. It's Decky on the break. That's a pretty good one from the Northern Irishman. Looking here. Had an excellent start to this match. They played a really, really high level first game against the Maltese in match number one of the night. Did Ronan and Deck. Lost one frame that they had a shout of actually winning. And it was a crucial one. More than anything, I think you give the the credit to, to Dehan in that frame. Yeah, it was a poor safety from from Declan, he knows he shouldn't have gone in off, but it was an excellent finish from Dan to win the match. Was well, I actually had a quick word with Declan actually after the game, and uh, he wasn't even considering the cue ball on that shot. He thought there's no chance this is going to reach the corner pocket. He just kept on moving. These tables do play very, very quick. He's had a lot of time on it this weekend. Still, even catch the very best out. Here comes the discussion time because there's multiple ways you can go here. And Declan and Ronan have very much enjoyed a, a mentor mentee relationship for a number of years, but I think since Declan's properly established himself as, as a genuine pool player a few years ago, that's, that's sort of changed a little bit. And there's it's a fascinating relationship they have, but also it, it, it was never a it was never a, a coach-student relationship. I asked Declan about that this weekend actually, and he said he, he very much learned by being beaten by him. He spent a period of time just turning up and donating a couple of pounds to him just as a, <laughs> a little incentive for their practice sessions. But he just said that he studied he studied what Ronan was doing when he was playing. Ronan didn't give him any advice. I'm sure they debated patterns, but it, it was never a, you should do this, you should do that kind of coach mentality, decision making. This is the problem with Ronan's cut break from time to time comes out like this. Two nil down and only 12 minutes left and the, 
the way Knight has gone, you know that Vivek's going to want to take this on. Not saying that Ronan wouldn't have done if he had that chance, but he might have felt there was more value in pulling back. See there, it might just be enough room to get to the bottom one of the. Oh, he might do. He's made the fluke. <laughs> so the bottom one of the four yellows in the line. Obviously, he's got the one to the centre. So there's definitely a route out. He's actually landed okay here. He might have to play into him because he might not be able to drop this in slow enough. But it's definitely a shot on. Lovely, friendly little bump that, wasn't it? This is thin, but he's played it well. Played it very well. Oh, he's on this to right centre. If he's on this to right centre now, it could not have worked out any better for him. That's a lovely shot. Yeah. Had to rely on a little bit of luck with how the, the cannon came in the cluster, but he played it at a great pace. He played it about as deliberately as he dared, really, because the yellow to the top left just sort of crawled over the lip of the pocket. Really, really well controlled. Now the only question mark left in this finish is, does the eight ball go top right? Still just got to dot the I's and cross the T's on this finish. I think his issue is he's slightly off straight the wrong way on this yellow to bottom left. He's going away from his work in the middle of the table. Yeah, and he, if the rate eight ball does go, he needs to get to straight on the yellow. Bit risky there. Yeah. This might not be the end of the world because if he can avoid the reds, can he come a couple of cushions around? Can't get into it enough. Behind it, no. Might have to try and put it. Well, if he pots it thin, does he hit the red? No, he goes wide. He's done all right. He has done all right. Assuming this goes, he's done well. Yeah, I didn't think he could get that far across the table. That's he's done well there. It was tight, yeah, it really was. It's not foul, that, by the way, with the red dropping in. It's just lost a turn. Vivek played a complete legal shot there. Really wasn't much room. And it just goes to show on a finish like that, it really does not take much to derail it. The issue for Vivek is he wasn't low on his yellow to bottom left. If he is, he goes straight into the to the middle and he can really pick his angle on where he can place the cue ball and be precise and then eight ball all of a sudden goes from maybe a two three and ten to a seven eight out of ten it makes a huge difference no surprise to see ronan play with his food a little bit here that was to be expected the reds weren't nice why wouldn't you just make him a little bit nicer and put vivek in a bit of trouble while you do it Having said that, though, we've already seen Vivek come out of a snooker and pot a ball. It's not beyond, beyond the realms of possibility he makes this. Yeah, not this time, but it's one of those shots that you give him two or three sighters at that and you, you'd expect to get it pretty close. Ronan would have known that when he played the shot, but he also knows the he'll play the percentages. Chance of him clearing the way the balls were locked laying compared to the chance of Vivek making that from the cushion. story a few times on commentary so apologies if you might have heard this one before but 
many moons ago when I first started covering this glorious sport of eight ball pool. Familiar face of Simon Webb was sat next to me in the commentary box. You would expect him to just control that cue ball a touch better. And a great opportunity here for the for the naughty boys to get this one finished. whether they pull back for the, the yellow just touching the red higher up the table there but yeah, just too much angle so they do need to play one cannon so I think so so play. does it go bottom right? oh it might go it might go bottom right because you've got easy access to, to that line Ronan's just looking at it now leave the cue ball there your work is pretty much done talked about it earlier in there with a different set of players at the table but Ronan's definitely of a school that if you don't have to move a ball don't yeah absolutely is that's the plan this been given some chances by the max of that's of that there's no doubt but Ronan McCarthy and Declan Brennan are here to play tonight that's a super level they've just played for two matches in a row and they are still in with a shout of qualifying from this group welcome back to the Pairs Cup Ryan Pisani at the table and if the last match was big as it eliminated one of our four pairs tonight this one is even more important the winner of this one takes control of the group. Ryan Pisani nearly making a golden break there. That's somehow going to be dry, mind. You've got seven balls near pockets. Not one of them has gone down. And Curran and Paul Bradford have a real opportunity here to get their first frame of this match on the board. And if they were to win this one, well, what a story that could develop here. Talked earlier on in the night about how it was a pretty defined list of favourites tonight in a one, two, three, four order, at least on paper before a ball was played. These were the rank outsiders. But we've seen amazing stories happen in the pairs before. Now looking at yellows, and the bottom of the table on yellows is really tricky entirely sure how they're going to work that one out. They shouldn't be going for these. They've got to guard against the easy loss of turn at the top of the table as well. Not sure what their options were for Reds, but Reds may have been the better option. Because you take Reds, you get the loss of turn at the top of the table. The Reds at the bottom were easier to, to deal with. But now that the yellow's got in front of them, the reds at the bottom of the table are horrible. This is very much a big tactical exchange. This could take a little while. There is that. That's the turn that I mentioned. <coughs> you would say that in a frame like this, which is very, very tactical, you'd have to give a huge edge to our Maltese pros here. To agree. They may well have taken the wrong colour set to start with. In terms of reds, may have been better. I don't know if they have a good option to start. The more they pot here, the worse it's going to get. I wonder if they think they can get out. Not entirely sure how. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wonder with the yellows at the bottom of the table, can you squeeze the top of the ones. Well, they're going to get the angle into the into the into the pack. Going to get the angle here, and it, it might have the angle. Yeah, I mean, difficult to tell, but it might have the angle to cushion first into the eight ball, which would be lovely. That would help. Yeah, because they're moving the, the yellow that's awkward and keeping the one over the pocket. No, it was just going to throw a little bit wider. Could have come out worse. I think they made the right decision for me. 
And the longer you stay in that frame in a tactical battle, the less likely you are to win it if you're Cohen and Paul. So they've taken on the finish, and they are not done just yet. Some shot he's got to pull out, though. I think the yellow goes bottom right, so you can just go through this. Oh, he's got to stay underneath it. Oh, what a shot that is. Yeah. He had a line there. He could have topped on and off the left-hand side. That yellow does go. If it doesn't go direct, it goes off the red. So he's, he could have given his dad a better shot here if he'd played that with topspin rather than screwing it back. But take nothing away from the pot. Oh, it's not bad this either, you know. Oh, how about that? I tell you what, boys. Wow. I'm saying don't go for it. They're having none of it. I tell you what. It's been unbelievable out if they can get these. Big eight ball coming. Oh, what a finish, lads. Out of the night. Absolutely superb. From father and son, Cohen and Paul Bradford. That is one of the finishes, not just of this night, but of plenty of nights. Winning it is huge for their partnership because it now allows Cohen to play the next three frames, two singles and a scotch. So you know, he's, given, he's given his son the platform here to potentially, you know, do the work in this match. Obviously, that's dependent on whether he gets a shot. Well, he talks about Vic Max's first break of the night being break of the night. That's just been overtaken. Ryan Pisani there. We, we actually questioned, well, I did at least, in the, in the first match to see Ryan breaking when the choice was was there between himself and Dan, see Ryan breaking. I'm not questioning it anymore. He's hit a couple of huge, huge breaks. Now needs to put the finish to go with it, which isn't a certainty. Far from a certainty. It definitely isn't. Oh, and he's landed plumb on the red as well, which Would was you believe it. Be tricky. Now, can go and take this red be on the next ball. Even if not, you take the red and and then you've got your set. And then you play safe. Yeah, yellow's dead in the water here. And yellow on the top of the table is real nightmare fuel. So he was okay, he could screw off the yellow. That gets him onto the next ball. Didn't try and get up the table, do anything too fancy. The issue is here, yeah, he's just looking at it. Is he going into the red and yellow? Is there a little bit of jeopardy on this shot? Oh, the yellow, on, the two yellows on the left-hand side are dead, so you, there is freedom in this shot. Oh, that's come up nice. That's come up nice because the red goes independent here. That was really good. Just try and make this one clean. Maybe he feels like he can't. Sure he can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. See what he was working out. So now it's straight to the top right. Leave the cuba where the red is and he knows when he plays the, the last red. He can't avoid contacting the yellow. So he's just trying to see what would he have and it's red to right centre. This is why excited about watching young Cohen play Paul. It's not just potting balls and throwing a cube around the table. He is picking out the pattern. This has been a, a beautiful pattern he's picked out. <laughs> Dad's still living every ball though. Yeah. I think he's probably the most anxious out of anybody because I think anyone watching feels complete confidence in Cohen here. Looks so, so smooth. Side. He's taken these out absolutely beautifully. But it's not just the fact that he's he's taken out a great finish because you know I'm sure there's plenty of of good young players who can. But doing it on this stage against two of the best players in the world, live on the telly, and looking completely in control as you do it is hugely, hugely impressive. That was so tough. You can have a few goes at that one before you're making it. That was tough. Okay, time for a little bit of calm, a little bit of composure. 3.20 on the clock. 
Three nil in front. It's all there. Yeah, it's hold yourself together, Tyler. They both made a mistake in this frame. That's probably another one, really, if I'm being harsh by yeah. by Paul. But there's still enough space on the table to work this one out. Just take your time. Yeah. Go about it slightly differently to normal. Don't get too down on the fact that you left the yellow at the bottom of the table. A couple of options here if they want it. They really have got options. I, I would go down now. Just don't get anywhere near straight. That's a good shot. Yeah, that is. I know it's on the cushion, but the angle's fine. Yeah, you just have to pot the ball here. Final couple of matches tonight. I actually could have done with pulling up a little bit shorter there. It was still okay. Still had plenty of angle. Dan Grek and Ryan Pisani can still qualify. They've got to play Vic and Vivek Mack. But for Cohen and Paul Bradford, they've just beaten the World Championship finalists 4 0. And they have got the great Ronan McCarthy and Declan Brennan to come. And if they can find any form of result, it's a huge, huge Pairs Cup upset. What a victory for them. And these next two matches are massive. So Vic and Vivek are out. They can no longer qualify. But this is a massive match now for Ryan and Dayan. Because if they win it, they go to two wins and a defeat. And they then become quite big fans of Ronan McCarthy and Declan Brennan. Because if the Northern Irishman can get a win in the final match of the night, we would have three teams with two wins and a defeat. And we will be playing a three-way six-red shootout. Which, let me tell you, there are quite a few people quite invested in that happening. And quite a lot of them know Declan Brennan and Ronan McCarthy personally. <laughs> I would suggest that the six red shootout is quite highly likely right now, as well as Paul and Cohen has played. They'll be second favourites in that match, Kins, Deck and Ronan. Therefore, six red becomes a likely outcome. necessarily this finish it's how are they feeling because both Dayan and, and Ryan missed bad balls in that last match okay it was a fabulous out in the opening frame from Cohen and Paul but you know nothing you can do from Dayan and Ryan's perspective or you can't beat yourself up over it but the next two frames they missed chances especially Dayan that missed to the top corner was quite jarring for a player of his level And there's another one. Not going to fluke it either. And just as we saw in the last match with the Bradfords, the Max will not let them off. Got lost with the route there as well. They were sort of truck crossing themselves, and that was a miss on the ball, which should have been their final ball. Vivek. Straight would have been better, but you can work with this. It hasn't worked out. Had to sort of screw off the red, not into the yellow and red together. out quite a bit there. Not sure what else you could do. It's hard to find a safety. Mm. 
Gabriel Dias Silva. And even though the only way that the Maltese can now qualify is via a three-way six red shoot out, they'll still have a fair bit of hope of getting there. Which doesn't seem to be at the moment. It's a tough place to be. chance for Vic then to try and get something going for them, see if they can get something out of the night. Yellows, three yellows at the top, just marginally awkward. Shouldn't be a problem, get on the top one with a nice angle. Pull up now would be perfect. Yeah, that is ball in hand, perfect. Declan Brennan watching. The dark night overlooking Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just getting involved. Yeah. Not entirely sure what he's doing there. Eh? I thought he was just going to play on and off the cushion, <laughs> full ball into the yellow that's causing the slight issue, and and you've won the frame. I'm a little bit surprised he's gone for a really delicate position, and it's not worked at all. Decent attempt at the recovery, but it is not there. That's why I said he was ball in hand perfect, because all he had to do was just top spin on and off the cushion, and it, you guaranteed just to get the, the nice contact on that yellow you'd have. And the fact that you were doing it before you had to play the one to top right meant you had two balls you could land on, and you were knocking one into the middle of the table, which you could also land on. And you weren't really moving the balls very far anyway, so you, you're always going to be on the ball top left. So. Decision making error rather than execution. thinking about it a bit, Diane. Just left himself a slightly awkward angle. Did the right thing going down for that ball, but not the best of angles he left himself. So just having to work it out. shot. Hit the cap beautifully as well. Clay Castaldi watching on. Mentioned Ronan McCarthy, this year's world champion. There is last year's 2023 WPF world champion, Clay Castaldi. Good to see him supporting his two Maltese teammates, in Dan and Ryan, here tonight. Clayton was over for the the Masters this weekend, so just down the extra day to cheer on his teammates. I'm wondering if Dan's running a little bit of clock here. I'm pretty sure he is, <laughs> because he's naturally a very quick player. And I'm, I did wonder earlier, he seemed to be taking a little while on a shot that maybe didn't need it, but. He's absolutely running time, isn't he? Which only works if you make the finish. Which he's going to do. I mean, as if you try and run clock and then you make a mistake, it's 2-1, you wouldn't mind those minutes back. 
3 0. It'd be very nice. Very tidy finish from Dan Gregg. 3 0 up. It's not happening, it's not happening, is it? <laughs> it really isn't. Kick shot then for Vic. Still one you fancy him to go pretty close to. Oh, nowhere near it. You could tell by the way he was lining that up that he was going to be nowhere near. Well, now the, the Maltese duo won the match. Dan's not chewing clock, he's happy to, to get after these. Yeah, he wants to pot some balls, he actually played a poor shot there. So he played a poor shot, he wanted to be almost straight. Not that it a huge amount. It doesn't. They should have been playing on the one on the right hand side there. They, that would have basically been the end of the, the frame. Now they've got a slightly awkward angle. So this slightly awkward angle is down to Dehan's really poor careless shot earlier on rather than the one that's just been played. Yeah. Let's change that one nicely. Good shot. And that'll do it. Vivek and Vic Mack throw in the handshake. So that will do it for Ryan Pisani and Diane Grek. They have given themselves every chance of a three-way six red shootout. They're still alive. And they now join the corner of Declan Brennan and Ronan McCarthy. Not done yet. It all comes down to this. The Bradfords have it all in their own hands right now. 15-year-old Cohen Bradford and his dad two for two all they have to do is avoid defeat but <laughs> it is two of the greatest around right now that are on the other side of the arena the world champion and the champions league champion Ronan and Declan in their way but what a break this is and what a potential chance this is to get going yeah all you have to do lads <laughs> is beat two of the greats but a great chance to get one on the board early and put them under pressure. I mentioned in the last game that for this is probably the biggest gap in, in level on the night, as I said, on paper at the start of the night. And that doesn't mean that these guys can't win this game, but they they probably have to play close to perfect. At least get chances to do so, of course. Because the issue that they didn't have to worry about when they played Dan and Ryan is Dan and Ryan gave them a little bit of leeway. They made a couple of mistakes. Declan and Ryan don't really give much up. You might get one. Maybe it's a push two in a game. But even one feels rare with you you're not going to get away with much has he just come too far could they have come up for these two earlier on key to this was always getting on that ball how oh, they landed on it perfectly it's been a very very good start the yellow under his hand plays quite big here oh he plays that well just manipulated the pocket enough that was lovely don't get fiddly with the yellow here. If you're not confident of going around it, just pull it back an inch or two. Go and say and roll it forward to the cushion. I'd bring it back if I was Paul, just to make sure. He's okay. He's okay. Played that perfectly. Tap of the table from the young man. And well. Great start. Great start. Key shot coming up right now. If he pl plays this, he's got to get it right. Oh, it's very good. It's very, very good. It's all about where that yellow went, making it as awkward and as horrible as possible for going. And now his red is open. This is a 
fascinating safety exchange, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. I tell you what, Cohen's been holding his own in it as well. He's up against one of the greats. Yeah, and that's in this. That's why I thought it was really interesting. You know, can you can you hang with one of the best players in the world in this sort of frame? He answered a lot of questions tonight for me. deal with the one that Ronan put down here. Lands on it okay, but a little straight. You have to remember when you're working out this safety exchange that what Cohen's doing right now is exactly what Ronan wants him to do. Ronan has played the percentages and tried to make it as difficult as possible happy enough for going to go. We saw this sort of exchange between him and Jordan Shepard throughout the weekend in the Masters. Jordan good enough to get it on quite a few occasions. Can Cohen. I'll tell you what, if he gets this shot right, he can. Oh, I'll tell you what. He's left him natural here. He's left him natural to float through the gap and get on the final yellow. This has been a brilliant visit to the table so far. He's three balls away, but he's in position. Just run too far, or can he nip this? He can pot it, but he's going into the red. Ronan may be worried for the first time in the visit here. Just give yourself a shot at the eight ball hit. Screw back off the red. He avoids it. Just overdoes it, but overdoes it so far he's got it to the middle. That'll do. That will do. That'll do. Oh, I tell you what. And even a smile from Ronan McCarthy as well, and you don't often see that. Remember, they have to lose three frames from here not to win the night. There's no advantage going for a finish there whatsoever. Not the case for Declan, because they've got to win three frames. He might have to chase one here. Yeah, weirdly, the best thing that could have happened for Paul there is missing that one. Check that Declan's managed to achieve there. Okay, two yellows haven't really opened up for him. <coughs> Plenty of room. One above goes as well. It's just gone past the straight. You have to judge the cannon on the yellow. He's just going to be grazing it on the way through. He could knock it safe. He might pull back and take both of them in the same pocket, actually. Better angle. Hasn't got a better angle. And with the yellow right at the top of the table as well, he needs a great angle on the last ball to go up. Oh, it went in the centre. That helps. Oh, I was working on the assumption it had to go long. That does help. He's still got to find a great line. I want to visit this. Really high level. Really, really high level, yeah. Touch straight on this one that he would have wanted, so he's, he'll just have to accept what he's got. It shouldn't be a problem on the eight ball anyway. The two frames we've just seen back to back have been just absolutely brilliant. 
a joy to watch. Yeah, properly, properly good, this. Declan Brennan keeps <coughs> this match alive, keeps this group alive. Remember, Declan Brennan and Ronan McCarthy have to win this match. This frame is not enough without another one on top of it. Ronan nails the treble. Declan had to try and force something. Does he get lucky? No. That will be that. That's what a what a night we've seen. Absolutely well, incredible. Probably the biggest underdogs of any group so far in the ultimate Paul Pairs Cup. Are gonna put out the doubles world championship finalists, a former Pairs Cup semi-finalist. And a former Pairs Cup finalist and current world champion and Champions League champion. I have to say, I know it's not someone, this isn't a young lad that's just had a special night. He's got a massive future in the game. He's played brilliantly tonight. He's not put a foot wrong. He's missed one pot and that was it. But this decision making that he's made tonight has been absolutely incredible. Oh, and he's ending it in style. This is incredible. Over to you, Dad, for the exclamation mark. Not to be, but the handshakes come in. And a night to remember for Paul and Cohen Bradford. Father and son have done it. An incredible achievement, a wonderful victory. One that will live very long in the memory not just for them, but for anyone who watched it tonight. We may have just witnessed a star of the future. What an incredible performance.